Don't forget to subscribe TechQuest Vlogger and also tap the bell icon to never miss a video from us. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how we can install Citrix Director on Windows Server 2012 R2. We will also talk about some of the features available with Citrix Director. Once again, friends, my name is Nitin Lal and I welcome you all to TechQuestVlogger.com. If you are new to my YouTube channel, then consider subscribing. Alright, let's begin. Welcome back friends. Before performing the installation of actual Citrix Director, let's quickly understand the system requirements here. Now if we talk about operating system, we require at least Windows Server 2008 or 2K12. Now if we talk about CPU, you require two virtual sockets here as well as two core per socket. Now memory, uh, you can have 4 GB of memory in case if you would like to install your Citrix Director on separate drive. So in that scenario, you can have 50 GB for OS, 10 GB for your actual installation of uh, Citrix Director, and you can have a separate page file as well and give it 10 GB of space. Now that is something in which you would like to perform the installation separately on a separate drive. Let's say if you would like to install it on C drive, then you can have uh, close to 70 GB of space. That should be enough. And the requirements which I'm talking about right now, that is actually for production environment. But in case if you're going to install it in your lab environment, then you can have a normal configuration as well. But in production environment, you should have at least these much uh, config available to perform the installation of Citrix Director. Now, also, if you talk about some old versions, earlier than 7.x citrix director was not available so we only had s side at that point of time and s side has been replaced with citrix director now now with s side you have an option where you can set up some report you can create some reports you can fetch it on a monthly basis you can fetch it on a weekly basis or a day report as well and that report contains different filters as well like for instance the user counts on the environment connection time for the users so many things which you can you know have a look with citrix s side now the same functionality is available here in citrix director as well now you have an option whereas you need not to give access on the app center which was there until 6.5 now here let's say if you have a separate service desk and you would like them to manage the users and all that activity which uh, they need to do to log off the users or manage other stuffs as well you can very much use this citrix director and uh, you can um, give them required access uh, on the uh, studio and accordingly they will be able to access uh, and manage the users uh, by using the citrix director so for now let's quickly jump over to the machine where i'm going to install citrix director here so i'm going to install it on windows server 2012 i'm not using a separate machine because i don't have much resources available now on this uh, machine of mine so that's why i'm going to install citrix director on the top of my uh, delivery controller but in your actual production environment you can have a separate machine as well so to perform the installation it's pretty straightforward so nothing fancy actually which you need to follow here all you need to do is just to load the media which we have already done here so let's quickly run the autoplay yeah let's run the auto select now here you have an option whereas you can install different components which available in this media i have already created a separate video for most of these components so in case if you would like to have a look you can simply click on the link reflecting on your screen right now now in this video we are going to cover citrix director so let's quickly click into this simply click yes read the license agreement i have already done that so simply accept the license agreement after reading it and then click next now that's the component which we are going to install here so that is fine simply hit next now in this screen you need to supply the name of your controller so that's the same machine where i am right now it is acting as a controller as well as i said so let's get the fqtn of this machine so that's the name of my machine copy it paste it here test the connection and you can see it's successful simply click on add as you can see here uh, my delivery controller is added now in case if you have multiple delivery controllers in your environment just simply supply it under this box and uh, test the connection and then add it 
that's fine just simply hit next now in this screen as you can see that is going to install one of the feature called uh, windows remote assistance this is required to perform the installation of citrix director so leave it check hit next so these are the ports which is actually required now there are other options as well in case if you have multiple director server in your environment and you would like to have it more secure then you can use netscaler as well you can you know use the load balancing feature of netscaler or if you have any other load balancer in your environment you can use that as well and you can simply redirect your request to one of the director servers simply hit next so that's my installation directory here uh, as you can see that there is uh, some requirements uh, like a windows ra feature which uh, it's going to install here core component which we have selected was director delivery controller that's the name of my delivery controller again the feature and these two ports actually which you can see further down 80 and 443 it's going to you know create a rule against these two ports on the os level install so this installation is going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to pause this video for now. As soon as this installation is done, I will be back. Welcome back, friends. The installation has been completed successfully. Let's look into the all programs. And here you can see this Citrix Director icon. So let's try to open it up. As you can see that it's not a snap-in which actually loads once you try to gain access on Citrix Director. It's just a normal web URL, as you can see on the screen as well. So in case if service desk user would like to have access over it, all they need to do is just log in by using the name of the URL. It's not a snap-in or something which one has to load on his or her machine to gain access into it. So let me log into uh, the director here. Oops, sorry. Supply the name of your domain. So that's the main page as you can see here. That's my delivery controller. Uh, here you have certain options which you can manage uh, by using uh, the Citrix director. It's more like a user management tool as well as the reporting tool which you can see in one pane rather than you know having different softwares all together like which you had in the previous versions. So from this console you can manage the user, you can see the reports as well, you can you know track down the performance, whatever you want you can do it from user perspective. So let's have a look on some of the reports which are available. So now if you go into trends, here you can see you have uh, different options available. Now that's the session page. If you would like to see how many sessions you have overall, you can uh, have a look by looking into this. Uh, here you have different options as well. In case if you would like to have a look on certain delivery groups, you can do that. Uh, as you can see here, I have one delivery group for Windows 2K12, which is my application-based delivery group. And the other one is, uh, you can see this Windows 8 delivery group, which is specifically the client OS. It's for my VDIs. So let's say if you would like to have a look how many sessions you have uh, for your 2K12 in the last two hours, or maybe 24 hours, seven days, month, or a year, you can do that. Uh, from here as of now I don't have any session so I, I won't be able to see anything and I don't think I have any historical data as well available for the last 24 hours uh, if I look into maybe a year let's have a look I don't have any because <laughs> I haven't used any of the applications as of now I have published few but I haven't used it so that's why I do not see any session details listed here but in your real-time environment you should be able to do that and in case uh, if you have any report listed here you would like to export that as well you can do that by simply clicking on this uh, uh, export button and you can export your reports here you can see you have some failures information as well uh, in failure you have three different options available if you would like to see the failures in regards to your desktop operating system then you can simply click here or select the failure type fail to start stuck on boot unregister whatever you would like to do you can simply manage it from here in case if you would like to see specifically on some delivery groups that option is also available and again the time periods uh, as you can see here you have multiple options available two hours 24 hours likewise we have seen on sessions 
and again you can export that report as well based on your preference whatever you want you can have it just for server OS you can have it just for desktop OS as well you can have overall connection status as well here and on that it will include everything now here you can see the login performance if you would like to see how much time the login is actually taking let's take an example where as user has complained that their logon is going pretty slow if they access any of the application or a desktop now if you would like to understand where exactly the problem is whether it's a problem on the server end where you have a resource crunch or maybe a problem on the network end you can simply track down that information from here now uh, here you have a load evaluator index just to understand how much load you are having again you have an option whereas you can uh, you know select the delivery group type you can select the time period as well you can simply select from here and fetch your report accordingly now from this tab you can simply evaluate how much capacity you actually require in your environment now here at the top you can see you have certain options available now in case if you are going to increase your application into the environment or you're going to increase certain user in your environment and you would like to know how much more resources you require you can evaluate the things by using this report well that's the machine usage again you have an option whereas uh, you can you know set it up based on the delivery group counts uh, now uh, further up you have desktop OS type as well as server OS type I have both in my environment so you can simply you know fetch that information from here some of the admin actually creates different delivery groups based on the different uh, departments in their environment for instance if you have uh, insurance department you have HR department and you have separate delivery group based on those departments you can simply get to know how much uh, machines are in actually used for HR users or for insurance uh, department users so you can simply get that information from here now you have an option whereas you can have the resource utilization report as well now again you have two different options available uh, desktop OS type as well as server OS type I have both that's why it's showing me both options so I can simply get to know how much my desktops are actually utilizing and how much my server OS are actually utilizing so I can simply get that information from here again you have an option whereas you can fetch the report based on your preferred time period you can simply select it from here now from here you can create your own custom reports as well to do that all you need to do is to click on create report you can simply set up the query here you can give the name of the report let's say uh, you want to have a user accounts sessions you can set up your custom query as well for instance I would like to have a report from 1st January to let's say 26 January I can select the output column as well what actually I want uh, I can simply use the session end time in case if you would like to add another column as well like for instance video version or maybe I want the OS type as well and uh, you know the delivery group name so with that I can simply create a report as of now as you can see i have no preview available because i don't have any sessions and i haven't used this environment to create any session even so that's why i do not see any report here but in your real environment you will be able to see the report you can simply save that report you can export that as well again you have all those options available so these are few actually options which is pretty helpful if you are using citrix director we talked about some user management as well with Citrix Director. For instance, if I'm the user and uh, I have some issues and I call service desk to have a look into my system, I can simply search for that user from here. Let's say my username is SQL Admin, which I'm actually logged in right now. So that's my username. As of now, I don't have anything assigned uh, for that particular user ID. But in case if you have something assigned for that user ID, you will be able to see that here so here you have an option as you can see on my left you can either restart the user machine you can shadow the user session as well you can reset their profile as well and in case if you're using personal readers you can reset that as well 
so these are some options which are actually available and which is actually helpful in terms of managing the users as well as you know fetching the reports for the environment so that's all i have for now thanks for joining me for this course i will see you in the very next tutorial of mine if you haven't subscribed my channel yet then consider subscribing until then i hope this has been informative for you and i would like to thank you for viewing